Let's talk about incitement, assassination attempts, and the legal system. Former President Trump survived an assassination attempt, thank God. First of all, pray for Trump's health and pray that there are no more assassination attempts. And this just means that things are getting even crazier and scarier in this U.S. election season for the USA and also for the world. Oh, and did you see the absolute evil reporting by the establishment media of the assassination attempt? They weren't even reporting the assassination attempt as an assassination. CNN first reported it as Trump falling, while other outlets, including NBC, reported it as loud noise. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be surprised if there are more assassination attempts, as the political left in America will do anything to try to stop Trump from returning to the Oval Office, because they know that his second term will be about ending the bureaucratic deep state that runs America. Hence, they will do anything to stop him from being reelected. And I wouldn't even be surprised if there are staged assassination attempts on Biden that are then blamed on Trump supporters, all to try to stop Trump from being reelected, which is crazy because there is no reason for any Trump supporter to even want to assassinate Biden, since Biden is literally committing political suicide all on his own just by showing up to work every day and allowing himself to be filmed or interviewed. Now, I want to take a break from the Trump assassination and jump to its connection to Israel regarding incitement. So senior Israeli journalist Amit Segal connected the assassination attempt on Trump to our situation in Israel with regards to incitement. But first, just listen to some of the inciting words over the years against Trump. Recently, it was a BBC reporter who took to Twitter to write, if I was Biden, I'd hurry up and have Trump murdered on the basis that he is a threat to America's security. That's David Ar Aronovich. Joe, you now have the right to take that Trump out. Take him out, Joe. If he was Hitler and this was 1940, you'd take him out. Well, he is Hitler, and this is 1940. Take him the f out. I think that Joe Biden should officially have Donald Trump killed off, and that would solve this problem of uh, him being too stupid to uh, run our country for four more years. I said, no, I said, if we were in high school, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. I will go and take Trump out tonight. Running away from Donald Trump, I think you need to go back and, and punch him in the face. They go low, you can... You know, there needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there is unrest in our lives. They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump. Now, here are the words of Israeli columnist Amit Segal about the incitement in Israel today, literally every day, against Netanyahu. And I'm quoting him translating it into English. He says, do words kill? Just in the last month, the following things were said in speeches in Israel. And here I'm going to let you actually hear some of them. And now Amit Segal continues. At the same time, a former IDF chief of staff called on the heads of the Secret Service and the current IDF chief of staff to actually carry out a military coup and put Netanyahu in his place. 
the former secretary general of the National Kibbutz Movement, hinted in an article in the Kibbutz Weekly paper that it is worth considering stockpiling weapons and secret weapons collections in preparation for a possible civil war against Netanyahu supporters. This is written by Anit Seidel, a senior columnist. In contrast to the Oslo demonstrations, where inciting words were uttered by anonymous activists, today we are talking about senior public officials in inciting publicly against Prime Minister Netanyahu, a former chief of staff, a secretary general of the kibbutz movement, a doctor at the Open University who was featured on the cover of a widely read newspaper, who for recently tweeting that Israeli President Herzog is like President Hindenburg of Germany who gave Hitler power, also many well-known fighter pilots and top lawyers, etc. Yet the state prosecutor's office, as usual, is not doing anything about this blatantly illegal incitement, and it's dragging its feet. Because we are not talking about prosecuting an Israeli citizen who fought against the horrific Islamo-terrorists on October 7th, which the state prosecutor's office worked on prosecuting immediately. So the hidden reason for the state prosecutor's office doing nothing against the blatant incitement against Netanyahu is that in the eyes of the prosecutor's office, the state state's attorney, the opposition, most of the press in Israel, and the insiders themselves, the story about prosecuting incitement offenders against Netanyahu it's not about the incitement, but it is against who is the incitement against. It's all about who the incitement is against. In their views, Netanyahu's opponents are much more independent and intelligent people than his supporters, and there is no danger that their incitement will translate from words into physical harm, so no prosecution of incitement is necessary. Opposition leader Yair Lapid himself went on to explain that incitement being said against the state prosecutor is more serious than the incitement against Netanyahu, because the state prosecutor is not the most secure person with security. Here is a global legal innovation produced by the head of the opposition. The depth of incitement is related to the depth of security for the person. That was the end of Amit Segal's words. Condemning the justice system in Israel for willfully ignoring the blatant, dangerous, and illegal incitement against Netanyahu. Highlighting the total political agenda of the justice system. Now, I just want to explain that the incitement against the state prosecutor that he was referring to was a joke. Published by Inon Magal, a senior right-wing media personality, in which he included the actual inciting statements against Netanyahu, but instead of using Netanyahu's name, he put in the name of the state prosecutor, and then added the word checking, bdika in Hebrew, in order to highlight the fact that he was checking the justice system to see if it would punish him for his joking words against the state prosecutor's office while ignoring the actual incitement against Netanyahu. Guess what? They took the bait. The justice system called to prosecute Inon Magal while ignoring all the incitement against Netanyahu by the political left. Hence again, it is clear to see the absolute corrupt corruption of the justice system that acts as a political tool by the political left against Netanyahu and the right. It is not about justice, but about influencing politics. So with each day, more and more Israeli people are waking up and seeing the absolute politicization and the injustice of the justice system and realizing why comprehensive justice reform is necessary for the future of Israel. In the meantime, May the one above look after both President Trump and Prime Minister Netanyahu and protect us from the destructive, unjust leaders of the political left in both of our countries who abuse the media and the justice system for their political agenda. And again, you follow me at the Pulse of Israel. I am optimistic. This is all a wake-up process, waking up more people so that we bring about the actual change we need in both of our countries. So hold on to your faith. Keep on praying. And please, God, we, you and me, are going to be part of the change by us waking up, by allowing our friends and family members and neighbors to wake up. We will bring about the change. The future will be good. And here in Israel, Am Yisrael Chai. Again, this is all during a war that the political left is inciting the act to, to actual murder. You heard one of the people. She's waiting with a noose. With a noose. She's using actual language about killing the prime minister. There were a few of them, and it's being ignored. In the middle of a war, an existential war that we're fighting against the Islamo-Nazi world against us with Hamas, Iran, Hezbollah, and they're focused on, tr on inciting to kill a prime minister and topple a government instead of fighting our true evil. It's a wake-up process, everyone. It's a wake-up process. Hold on to your faith. Pray. Be part of the change. I'm Yisrael Chai. If you are not yet a subscriber to the Pulse of Israel videos, go to pulseofisrael.com and click to subscribe. And if you agree that these messages are important to be seen and heard, Please, every once in a while, click on the donate button.
I'll see you in the meantime, shalom everyone, and thanks for watching. Pulse of Israel on frontline videos from the Holy Land. Support our work by donating today.